So this is gonna be a little update on the speakers that I previously had made a video about, I'm gonna say about two weeks ago, which are these little guys. These are the RBH61 SWs. I had picked these speakers because I wanted to have a very similar form factor from the Ascendos that I had previously in my home theater. So for the new theater build, I didn't wanna go too much bigger or really that much smaller than those speakers. So for the new build, I wanted to have something very comparable, if not a little bit better. So when I did that unboxing, you know, I didn't read the specs before I got the speakers in for review. I just agreed. I was like, yes, let's, let's take these speakers. I've never heard RBH speakers in my house before. So let's go ahead. Let's get them in for review. I unboxed the speakers. And when I took them out of the box, I was really surprised about how kind of small the speakers were. These actually look very tiny, to be honest with you. That's not to say that these are not some fantastic sounding speakers because they are. I've been listening to them for the past two weeks and they are definitely some great speakers, especially for the price. But I do think that they are gonna fall a bit short as far as filling out the space that I have in my home, new home theater room. Maybe in my older theater room, they would suffice, but you know, I've got a bigger space, so I'm probably gonna need some bigger speakers. Which brings us to these guys. These are the bigger versions of the 61 SWs. These are the 661 SWs slash R for reference. So these are very similar, almost identical to the smaller versions. Obviously they're bigger because it has an extra six and a half inch. So you get two of those and also the same one and a quarter inch AMT tweeter. Size wise, they're almost exactly the same as well. They're only five inches deep, seven and three quarter inches in width and they are bigger, well, they're taller at 22 and a half inches tall. It is a six ohm speaker. The sensitivity is 90 dB and the frequency response is 70 Hertz up to 40 K. So with that AMT tweeter, just like the smaller version, you should get some excellent high frequency extension. During my, you know, this is not gonna be a review, but during my time with them, I've had it for a couple days now. I've had the smaller ones for a couple weeks. I did do some comparisons between the two. As far as like detail retrieval, high frequency extension, they sound the same. The only real big difference between these two speakers is that I'm gonna say the mid bass is a little bit fuller sounding on the bigger speakers. Obviously it's a bigger cabinet, but I mean, if you are going to listen to um, use these speakers, well, the bigger speakers in full range, and you're listening to something like uh, the Billie Eilish album, the one with the bad guy on it, that album actually has a lot of like sub bass response to it. These speakers are not gonna be able to handle an album like that with a lot of bass, neither is a small one. So you're still gonna have to cross these over with a subwoofer. But I do think if you are gonna use either one of these speakers just for just a very simple two channel setup, I think if you want to use your tone controls, I know a lot of people don't like to use tone controls. Typically I don't like to use tone controls, but I did have both of these speakers paired up to the NAD M66 also with their monoblock set up with a pair of M23s, powering them with like 700 watts each. I mean, that's a very neutral amplifier. Luckily, the M66 does have Dirac. It's also got tone controls. So, you know, what I did was I boosted up the bass response up to a plus seven, which is maxing out the M66. And if you wanna get a much fuller sound, I mean, both of these speakers, once you jack up the bass, I mean, you will get a nice thicker sound. There are some things and like some recordings that you're obviously gonna miss because they don't go down as low. I'm gonna say, um, you know, I was listening to the album that was recommended by one of my Patreon patrons, uh, the album by Clara. I think it's, I believe the song is called, um, well, it's a, it's a cover of Wild World. And in this recording, you can hear her drummer kind of stepping on the, uh, the kick drum. You can feel it if you have this subwoofer hooked up to it. So you can kind of just hear that just that low end tap of him like stomping on the drum or stomping on the pedal. Whereas if you turned off the subwoofer, you're not gonna get that at all, even if you turn up the bass knob. Um, so, you know, again, while you will get a nice full sound if you turn up your bass control or if you wanna EQ it for a little bit more of a bass bump from like 100, from like maybe 70 Hertz on up, um, you're not gonna get, you know, the, the lower extension, the lower registers. But one thing that is really a standout to me, which kind of gave me a throwback of the Dolly Rubicon speakers, which by the way has two tweeters. I believe it has a ribbon tweeter and also a soft dome tweeter. 
is just the high frequency extension again from the AMT on both of these speakers. I mean, with the Dolly speakers, which is also a very kind of overlooked speaker, very much like these RBH speakers. These have kind of like the same detail retrieval that you would get from say, like an electrostat. So you get that, that detail that almost kind of just like floats in the air. So while I was listening to Fiona Apple's Shadow Boxer, during the beginning of that song, when she's speaking into the mic, and during a, a few minutes into the song, you can hear the spit in her mouth really clearly. It's very clearly locked in phantom center image, dead center, right in front of your face. You can hear it almost as if she's standing in your living room or in my living room. Whereas in some other speakers, maybe more neutral speakers, I'm gonna say like my Prolison R5Ts, which is a very neutral speaker, that I, I do have to actually have to listen for that kind of top end detail. Whereas it's pretty effortless on, on the RBHs. And that's the kind of same feeling that I also remember hearing with the electrostats from Martin Logan and also on the, on the Dolly Rubicon speakers as well. And I would even say the, uh, the Focal Sopras, which I think are kind of still my favorite speakers. Now, just going back to bass response really quick, I do have these speakers about three to four feet away from the wall. These are meant to be placed on the wall, so you will get the added benefit of the boundary reinforcement. So the bass, mid bass, should kick a little bit harder, I would assume. I don't know yet because I haven't hooked it up in my home theater, but you know, I'm just gonna base this kind of mini review. It's not really a review, but just my first observations about the speakers is that, yes, it is a bit light by pulling the speakers away from the wall. Again, I am gonna follow up this video with a full review once my home theater is intact. And you know, I, I got these speakers to be in the home theater environment, not in a two channel situation. So I think these are gonna perform pretty good as far as I can tell from their performance with two channel. And so if you wanna check out that video, definitely come back in a couple of weeks when I have everything all put together. And just really quick, I did read some of the comments from the previous video. Just so some of you guys know, I get a lot of speakers in for review, like dozens per year. This isn't the only time I've gotten home theater speakers in for review. This isn't gonna be the last time I've gotten home theater speakers in for review. These are review speakers. I don't get to keep everything that comes through my house again. So for all of you guys that might be confused about what I do on YouTube, this isn't a personal journey of my purchase history in home theater in two channel. I don't buy everything. I don't get everything. So guys, let's not get confused and think that everything that I review is mine. That's not the case, even though I wish it was. So thank you to RBH for sending these speakers out for me to review. Also, thank you to Dream Media for being a part of this home theater journey of mine, for getting into a new house. And guys, I didn't get a house for free either. And also helping me put the home theater together. Thank you guys. Definitely stay tuned. Watch the full review when it comes out in the next couple of weeks. Also, if you're on my Patreon, you can follow my home theater build over on Patreon and also on the YouTube membership where I've been posting a ton of pictures. I think those guys might be a little tired of me posting pictures, but that's uh, patreon.com slash Shane Lee and also on the YouTube membership. Thanks for watching. I'll be back again with a full review of these speakers and also a new home theater tour. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.